Let me start by saying thanks. Thanks for the opportunity that I've been given. Thanks for the class that pulled me through a very tough and confusing point in my life. Thanks for letting me escape for an hour and 30 minutes every single day. Thanks for the friends I've made this year. And thanks for not giving up on me and helping me to get to where I am. Thank you for reassuring me that I have some competence and some talent in something I care about doing. I wouldn't be on this path I'm on if it wasn't for you. This year alone has given me the chance to finally use what I've learned from years of writing scripts, recording short videos, and taking notes and tips from the people that inspire me. So let's go back to the start. I'd say my first introduction to film was indirectly from playing with plastic army men. I made these expansive worlds and stories in my head on the spot. Every time I took them out, I wrote another script. My parents had no clue where I got these ideas from. I never understood why they were so amazed. Anyway, about a year later, I saw firsthand what a camera and a bit of editing could create. I saw Steven Spielberg's 1998 film, Saving Private Ryan. Is that what they're supposed to tell your mother? When they send her another folded American flag? Tell her that when you found me, I was here, and I was with the only brothers that I have left, and that there's no way I was going to desert them. I think she'll understand that. There's no way I'm leaving this bitch. I thought it was so beautiful and gritty. I felt like I was there, and from that point on, I wanted to create something on par with that. At some point, I was introduced to YouTube, and I found World War II short films made by students and amateur filmmakers. For example, Jake Swing. At the time, his channel was called Sergeant Movie Maker. He made a lot of war-related films. They weren't necessarily top quality in any sense of the word, but the storyline kept me interested. Then I found a channel more focused on Nerf gun videos, C.A. Cox 97. Looking back, they, they made me cringe, but in his prime, he had a pretty large and devoted fan base. I also found various Lego stop motion shorts and uh, computer animated videos. Those are just a few of my biggest influences, and all of them collectively introduced me to filmmaking. That was really early on, back in elementary school or so. About a year or two later, my class would practice creative writing. I always kind of experimented with writing stories and, and scripts, but fifth grade was the year I was recognized for writing so well at my age. For an 11-year-old, my writing took a surprisingly dark tone. But to my amazement, my teacher encouraged me to write with even more emotion and feeling. She wanted me to keep writing the way I felt like writing. I noticed over the course of the year, everybody became more entranced in writing their own stories. They went from lighthearted to somewhat morbid. I was at a loss for words. I had no clue why my writing would have such a profound effect on my class and inspire so many people. It got to the point where my class would wait for the next story I'd write, like I was a famous author. People liked what I did, so I decided to take it a step further. I decided to start pre-production on what would have been my first big film. It took many shapes over a 10-month time frame. It went from a C.A. Cox 97 Nerf style video to a Sergeant Movie Maker style modern combat three-part story, and it finally became a massive 15-part series I wanted to sell. I had this idea that a bronze edition would be all 12 episodes plus one bonus episode, a silver edition would be 12 episodes, two bonus episodes, and a gold edition would be 12 episodes, all three bonus episodes, and the making of plus bloopers. I had all of the characters written down with people willing to play their roles, all the titles of every episode already planned. I even had people co-writing for me, but I dreamt too big and people started leaving the project until it was just me left, so instead of my first big film, it became my first large-scale failure, and my first lesson, never plan what you know you can't accomplish. 
and always have a plan B. As elementary school came to an end, I found myself with less and less time to continue writing, and slowly my inspiration and my drive to keep chasing my wild dreams went away. I started to wonder why I thought I could do any of the things I said I would. I was full of broken promises and everybody doubted me, even my parents. It really threw me off track and one of the only things I had a ton of ambition to do had just disappeared. I found sort of a rebirth for my ambition about two years later when I met my friend Kyle Morin. His dad and my mother were together for a while, so every weekend Kyle, his brother, and his dad came over and basically lived with us for three years. Kyle and I had a lot of common interests. Two of them happened to be World War II and filmmaking. So we took an iPod Nano and recorded hundreds, maybe a thousand different videos. Mom, can I use this? <laughs> I was finally starting to get some experience with filmmaking, and I finally had someone to help me with it. Three years went by, though, and Kyle didn't come over every weekend anymore. So the video stopped, and my ambition left me once again. As a sort of substitute for hands-on experience with a camera, I found that critiquing films with my parents let me analyze the things that worked in movies as well as the things that didn't. I was able to use these observations and apply them to my ideas. Let me keep my ambition going for a while until about sophomore year of high school. I was a very scary kind of lost. My ambition for nearly everything was gone. I wasn't able to do anything I actually wanted to do. I needed a plan, an idea for a career after high school. It wasn't until late that year when I was selecting my classes that I saw Block 1 television and film production under the CTE programs. I selected the class immediately. If I was going to do anything right, it was this. I wasn't going to pass up another chance to finally prove myself. I had no clue what to expect, but I was met with so much more than I thought. I was nervous at first, but as I got to know everyone, I felt the most comfortable I'd ever felt in a classroom. I felt like I belonged in the class. I enjoyed what I was doing for a long time, but I felt like I was losing my ambition slowly again. And it took me a while to figure out why I kept feeling like this, but I realized I wasn't proud to show what I had worked on. It was fun to work on all the little projects, but I wanted a real challenge. I wanted to create something I would think up scripts for in elementary school. Luckily, my chance was right around the corner. The thing I give credit to for keeping me interested in this profession and what showed me I was on the right path was my role as co-director on Intercepted. Intercepted is probably the only reason I didn't completely give up. For once, I was proud of what we made as a group. I finally had something to show, even if it, I didn't get to show everyone I wanted to show it to. It didn't really matter to me. And so here we are, present day. I chose to do this as a final because I'm not always open about how much this class really means to me. I don't always say enough, or I say too much, or I never get to the point. So I wanted these words to mean exactly what I want them to mean, and give them the right context. Thanks to this class, I feel like I can dream big again, and those ideas in my head aren't so far from my reach anymore. Before I found this class, I felt very unsure and very lost. Now I have some direction to follow. So with my senior year right around the corner, I can say without question, this has been my favorite school year since, like, fifth grade. Despite every unfortunate event I've had to put up with this year, I, I can't wait to see what next year's class creates, and I'm excited to be here every day. Every day has, at the very least, been fun solely because of this class. So thank you for everything you've given me. Thank you to SHS, thank you to my teacher, and thank you to my classmates. I honestly couldn't have asked for a better experience.